whenever we're boondocking and we operate the, the, the faucet and low to try to do dishes or whatever, you'll get that oomp, 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 oomp with the water pump trying to push out the water really slow. Even when it's fast, you still, it does a lot of shaking. The noise doesn't really bother us. It's just the, the inconsistency of the water pressure. And I'm sure everybody that has an RV knows what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna show you the water pressure and try to pick up some of the noise from the water pump on the before we do the install on the intelligent RV water controller. So if you're boondocking, you can kind of hear a pump on in the background. But when you're boondocking, you're using a little bit as low as pressure as possible. And you you might start getting, you can hear the pump in the background, kump, 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 trying to build up the pressure. So with installing the IRV WPC, it should eliminate all of that noise. We're going to show you what came in the box from Intelligent RV Water Pump Controller, which is a company out of Canada. We paid $169 for the product and with shipping, it came out to, I think it was $202. And it took about a week to 10 days to get here. It came FedEx. It comes in this little box like this. I've already taken the directions out. But inside the box, you're going to find the, the controller itself with the wire harness and the sensor. And you're also gonna find the other wires for the quick connectors from connecting it up to the pump, the water pump itself. This is the elbow bracket with the water sensor valve that you plug into here when we do the connection. And then depending on how much room you have, they also give you a flexible hose if you need to do a, a tight bend or, or whatever to accommodate how your water pump is, is, is mounted and also more uh, a plex for the connections of the sensor to the water pump itself. So it sends you everything that you need to do this. Now, the reason that we bought this pump with the controller is this product alleviates the cycling of the pump and how hard the pump works and a constant water flow. And of course, Kiki is putting it in her two cents too. So. It has a lot of safeguards with this intelligent water controller system. One of the things that I like about it is if the pump is on for more than five minutes continuous use, it automatically shuts off the pump. And that's to prevent, like if you had a water leak and the pump's constantly running, it automatically shuts off the pump. It also has a dry run feature on here also where if the pump senses that it's not getting any water flow through the pump, let's say that you, for some reason, you ran out of water and you left your pump on to try to get water going, it shuts the pump off so it doesn't overheat and burn up. That's a big plus, especially if you do a lot of broom docking. Okay, it also has the low flow cycling counter on here. It has six basically safeguards on here that you can turn on or turn off based upon how you use the pump. What I really like about it is that if you have the flow on here, for the long time run, where it's more than five minutes running, it automatically shuts off. And it also has where if you leave the pump on for more than 20 minutes, it'll actually shut the pump off too. So if you leave your RV and you forgot to turn off, I'm sorry, it was 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, it's the factory setting. You can adjust these settings. But if you leave your RV without forgetting to shut your, your power off to your pump, it will turn the pump off for you. If you have any errors on this, it does LED flashing sequence and it has a list in the book what, the, what those uh, flashes mean. And what's really nice about it is if you do have an error, it's super easy to reset. All you do is cycle the power off to your water pump. Wherever your water pump uh, switch is in the RV, you just turn it on, turn it back off, and it automatically resets. The five minute counter that I was talking about, if, if it senses flow after five minutes, it shuts off automatically. So let's say that you're taking a shower and you're, you're running the water from, uh, for, you know, soaping down or whatever, and you turn it off. Well, that resets 
the, the, the five minute counter. Every time you turn the water pressure back on and off, it resets the five minute counter. So it's really kind of hard, unless you're just taking a really long Hollywood shower, that, it, that you would lose the pressure after five minutes. So if you have kids, this is a great way to teach them not to take a longer shower than five minutes because it automatically shuts off. And then reset, again, all you do is cycle the power on and off. Donna brought up a really good point. She started freaking out. I can't take longer than a five minute shower. And I said, babe, it's only when we're boondocking. And it's not necessarily a five minute shower limit before the pump shuts off. You're, you're, you're in, the, in the shower getting wet. You turn the water off, just conserve water. That resets your five minute counter. Every time you, you turn the water on and off, it cycles the, the five minute counter. And she's like, well, what about if we're hooked up to city water? Well, you're not, you don't have the pump on. You have city water pressure. So the pump doesn't, this doesn't do anything uh, when the pump is turned off and you're using city water connections. So I can take as long of a shower as I want to when we're hooked up to yes. city water. Yes, dear. Okay. Happy wife, happy life. So the controller comes with a preset water value pressure at 33 pounds. And we obviously want to change that. We're going to set this to the highest water pressure, which is 45 pounds. And inside here, you'll see a little rotary dial. That little rotary dial set at zero from the factory, which again means 33 pounds. Nine, the, the number nine value is a pressure of 45. So we're going to set that before we install it. You have to take these four screws out to lift up this top in order to get to that. And then you use the little screwdriver provided in your parts bag right here in order to turn that to set to whatever water pressure you want. Okay, this is your rotary switch. And again, you can see that it's set at zero and we're going to set ours at nine, which is 45 pounds. So all you do is take the screwdriver and you turn it. So just take your time, go one, then two, then three, then four, et cetera, all the way up to whatever pressure you need. Okay, here's your actuators and they go from six to one, going from the bottom to the top. And we're going to do it in that order because that's the order that the instruction manual comes. So number six, it comes from the factory. You remember what I was saying about if it's to the right, basically to, it's going closest to the middle, it's in the on position. If it goes to the outside, it's in the off position. So number six is right here, and that's already set to the on position. And that's going to be your drun, dry run timer. So what that does is it prevents your, your pump from overheating if it's not getting any water going through, and that prevents it from burning up. Okay, your number five is your long run timer. And th what that does is, is, from the factory, it comes in off. We're going to leave that off because what that does is when you turn the power onto the pump, it'll automatically shut it off in 60 minutes. If you turn it on, the bad thing is, is that in the middle of the night, you got to use the bathroom, wash your hands, and you go to the sink, flush the toilet. The water's not going to work because it's already exceeded that hour, that 60 minute shut off. So all you have to do to fix that is you walk back over to where your water pump on and off switch is and cycle the power and that resets it. We're really good about not leaving the pump on when we leave the RV. So I'm gonna leave that one in the off position. Number four is your low flow cycling. So I'm gonna turn that one on. And again, what that one does is it prevents your pump from overheating and running dry. And uh, that prevents the pump from uh, slow dripping conditions. So in other words, if you have a really slow leak and it's just barely coming out, but it's running the pump just, just really slowly. It'll recognize that, hey, you have a, you know, left a faucet on or you got a leak going on and it'll shut that off. This controller is really good for those purposes of preventing any kind of water damage, if, as long as you have these selected the right way. Don't forget, when you're hooked up to city water, you're not running your pump. So you don't have the safeguards of a leak because you're not running the pump. And number three is going to be your run watchdog timer. And that's the one I was talking about earlier where it has, it's set for five minutes. And after five minutes, it shuts, it shuts the pump off. It has constant flow for five minutes. And again, that resets. Every time you turn the water faucet on and off in that five minutes, it resets the five minute counter. So don't freak out that you're gonna just have five minutes. But it's a really good way to keep your kids from taking those Hollywood showers that's what we called them in the military and um, preserve your water while you're boondocking. 
So I'm going to turn this one on. So far I've got six on, five off, th four on, and three on. One comes on from the factory in the on position. Two from the factory comes in the off position. Okay, switch number two, based on the instruction manual, is your quick tank change mode function. And the only time you want to mess with that is if you do not have a tankless water heater. So that's, that's when you want to start messing with that one, and you need to really read the directions on how to do that. We have a Truma. So we don't have to worry about number two. So number two is going to stay in the off position. Okay, switch number one should always be left in the on position for normal operation. You only put it in the off position when you're trying to figure out the lighting sequence from any kind of errors. So always leave it in the on position. And again, refer to your owner's manual on that. So on switch number one, we're going to leave it in the on position, which is this, the position that came from the factory. It's getting some stuff pre-wired before we go down into the, the morgue on our host camper uh, to do this. It's very self-explanatory. You take some of the, the, the quick connector wires that we have and you go ahead and I go ahead and put them on here. So purple to purple, and black to black. These two are going to go to the negative side of the pump. These are going to go to the positive side of the pump. And then this one is the, the sensor for the top of the pump. So now I'm just tightening everything back up from when we did the adjustments on the controller itself. So just four screws, no big deal. Just take your time and don't strip them out. Okay, now I'm gonna hook up the red side of the controller. The black with the shrink wrap goes to the motor. So all you do is you disconnect the power supply to the motor Plug this into the motor, and the wire that you connect disconnected from the motor goes into here. And I'm going to show you right here. So you go to the top wire on here, and you just pull that out. Set that to the side. The black one goes into the motor. And then this one goes in to this one. Now I've got to cut this negative to the pump and wire it in to these switches here. I cut the, the negative wire to the pump. You take the pump side and then this connector here, you open it up like that and you just put it in the hole. Like that, push it down, that's connected. Now you take the negative side on the other side. install the wire like so and it's connected the, the last thing you have to do is put the sensor on there but you don't do that until after you bleed the lines and make sure everything is good get all the air out of the line first okay here's the completed install that we did on the I R V W P C controller. Very important that you go to the outlet of the water pump for the pressure sensor. And if you can tell here, we had to go all the way up to here to a 90 coming in so we could make this work. Because this was originally 180 degrees over here and if you hooked this up, it wouldn't work because it was too close. So all these parts that you see come with the kit. Ran the wire for the sensor behind so we could just kind of tucked it out of the way. And the controller unit is right here. 
and the pump. And then the wiring connections are here. It's not a hard install. You just have to make sure, it's very important, to put the sensor on the opposite side of your screen. So it's going to be on the output, not the input, but the output of your water pump. Okay, that's full blast. Very little vibration at all. And the only reason why you can hear it humming like that is because we're in the morgue of my truck camper. Now this is going to go at a slight trickle. It's still a steady stream on the sink and we'll show you that. But you don't hear the pump going ooh, 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 ooh. You just hear it doing it occasionally. Now pump is not required or designed to run at real slow trickles because it'll burn up the pump. This also helps protect that so once your pump gets uh, hot it will shut the pump down so you don't burn it up. Okay this is the water full blast with the intelligent RV water pump controller installed. It's pretty consistent pressure and set at 45 psi. Now we're going to show you what the stream looks like at low pressure. And of course, listen, you can't really hear the pump at all. So if you're boondocking and you want a steady stream, you got it. We're going to start doing it. Mm, 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 pulsating in the water. And the biggest trick is because this does two liters per minute. It's not real fast when it, when it does the, 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 uh, the water. So when you turn it on, you can see that it's also a steady stream. So the controller does work. My only suggestion is I would highly recommend this for like a fifth wheel or a uh, travel trailer because of the length of the piping. But because our pump is literally maybe seven feet from this outlet here, there's not all that much pipe for this to push pressure back and forth. It does quiet down the motor a lot, but that really never bothered us. Um, so it's up to you if you want to use this in a truck camp or not. Um, it, couldn't, it couldn't hurt and it does help, but you have to figure out if, if it's worth the investment in, in the product. The customer service was outstanding because I've, I've had a couple of problems with what I was trying to do and I talk to Terry, the owner of the company, and answers the phone, answers your questions, and does what he needs to do. So I highly recommend customer service on this aspect. And I also called him on the weekend and he answered the phone. Okay, thanks. Stupid. Um, all right, so we're gonna show you what's in the box from the IRV, oh shit. <laughs> Okay, we're going to show you what came in the box from uh, Intelligent RV Water Control. That's not right either. We're okay. <laughs> I feel like I got to read this stuff. <laughs>